Welcome to new to hr and our webinar Supporting and Enhancing Line Manager Capability with Elizabeth Elot. My name is Nicole Dominique Lemaire and I'm the CEO of our online HR community. I've authored and co-authored several books and facilitated various HR workshops and courses throughout my career. Before we begin, there are some house rules. Although, as you know, new to HR, we're not too keen on supporting rules, but these may help you with a better webinar experience. On the right-hand side, you'll see a column. In this, you can type direct questions to Liz or myself during the webinar. As mentioned, I've partnered with talented HR experts from around the world to bring you unique value and training. I therefore would like to introduce to you Liz Eilert. Welcome, Liz. Please go ahead with the webinar, Supporting and Enhancing Line Manager Capability. I'm very excited to learn more as it's a key topic that has not been touched upon a lot. Hello everyone and um, welcome to the webinar on Supporting and Enhancing Line Manager Capability. My name is Liz Aylott. Um I am an HR professional. Um, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how we can support line managers in our role in HR. I've written this um, for, for, for those of you that are new to HR, for those of you that are aspiring a business partner role, and for those of you who may already be in HR leadership roles to think again about the line manager relationship with HR. The structure of today um, will be, as, as I am explaining here, um, we're going to start by looking at the context of the relationship between um, the business partner and HR and um, the line manager, and then we're going to go on to look at the role of the business partner in supporting the line manager. So let's think about the line manager's role in HR. Well, we've, we'll start by looking at um, the research. There's been quite a lot of research into the implementation of HR practices by the line manager. And we know that HR practices are important. Um, we wouldn't be in HR if we didn't feel that what we did was important. Um, and that there is a strong link between the line manager's implementation of HR and the performance of the organization. Most of the research is focused on the resistance of line managers to um, their role of um, implementing HR practices and view the line manager as a channel um, through which we implement um, the practices of HR and by doing that it disregards the needs and roles of line manager. We need our line managers to implement both technical HR strategies and strategic practices such as teamwork, training and development and empowerment. Um, yet you can see that um, our HR practices such as teamwork, engagement, training and management, uh, changing training and development of uh, I've explained are critical transformational HR activities and are these strategic HR practices are needed more than ever um, by the line managers themselves and need their, their skills to promote. Um, technical ones are technical HR practices are much easier for HR for line managers to implement. So our line managers need support to develop and enhance their own people management capability. So let's look at um, the role of line managers in engagement and how um, we, if we can improve their capability, we can make a difference to them. Um, and by making a difference to them, make a difference to the organization and um, their success. We know that um, the benefits of improved people management capability leads to in increased engagement, but how can that happen? Well, if we can improve the line management capability, um, we know we can um, help them implement HR practi practices um, and research has shown 
that if they, um, the line manager implements um, HR practices, um, they can then, the employees will have a positive experience and begin to be engaged, as you can see by the diagram we've got here. If um, the line manager um, is implementing HR practices, they also need to improve their own capability. Um, and that is where we will step in. If they are implementing HR practices fairly, they and the, uh, the employee, their team is doing well and feeling confident, then the, the um, relationship with them, the leader member exchange will also develop, develop and that will also lead to engagement. So we can see that by improving the line manager capability we improve the um, HR practices that are experienced by their team. We also help them improve their leadership skills which all together builds engagement. Those with in, those line managers that have an improved leadership relationship with their team um, will have employees that are more satisfied satisfied with um, the organization, um, more engaged and being more engaged um, so long as they have the training that they need um, the engagement will lead to um, a more successful organization and improve the line managers capability um, in leadership so that they then can um, progress in the organization. So it is the role of the line manager in managing people which is fundamental to getting the best out of their team. So let's we've, we've introduced the context a little bit. Let's go on to look at the players in the employment relationship and how those all have changed over the last 10 years um, and how that puts more pressure on the line manager. Well, you can see here a whole range of players in the employment relationship. Traditionally, the line manager's role has been to tell and monitor, but this role has changed dramatically. One of the reasons why it's changed is that HR has moved from the traditional transactional and administrative function that is um, described by Ulrich and Brockbank in 2009 and they have now become a proactive, business driven and strategic function. This therefore affects the relationship between the line manager and the human resource specialist with the employee really in the middle of all of this. Let's now look at trade unions. Um, many of you will be working in organizations that have had trade unions, some of you will not. Um, trade unions can legitimize um, change and act as a pathway for employee voice. However, we've seen um, in the last, um, again, 10 years, a decline in their power and their influence which puts increased pressure on frontline managers. Again, employees, therefore, their role has changed because in the past, in, the, um, in manufacturing in particular, we've had the support of the trade unions to speak um, on behalf of employees. Now with the um, change in the role of trade unions, um, the number of organizations that don't have a trade union, it is the relations, the employment relationship loses that um, third person and um, the line manager relates directly with the employee and the employee directly with the line manager. So employee voice is very important um, and supporting employees and that relationship um, is important. So it is in this environment that line managers work with the changing role of different players in the employment relationship altering the traditional relationship. Then add to that the impact of any different generations with their different views of the employment relationship and we can see it is a dynamic landscape in that the line manager um, practices. So we've said it's changing. Let's have a look at why that might be. Um, we've devolved um, HR responsibility to the line manager not always giving them the skills to be able to, te and the time, 
and the power to be able to deal with that. Um, Brewster and Larson um, explain why we have done that. And um, we, we did that in the early, um, or the, the late 1990s and the early 2000s with increased pushing of the HR um, role to the line manager. This enabled the um, HR professional and um, the team to play a more strategic role. Um, so it was obviously carried out to reduce cost. Um, to enable HR to be become more strategic, as we've s explained, um, and to place responsibility with the line managers who had um, the, the direct relationship with the employee. This, in theory, should speed up decision making if the line managers have the power to do that, to, to, to make those decisions, and um, was seen as an alternative for outsourcing the HR function. So the line managers received um, the responsibility, but not always the power, um, to deal with HR um, aspects. And we ga gained a central function um, for line managers to get to gain HR um, and um, to gain HR um, knowledge and experience, and a relationship with the business um, partner who was going to be able to help them um, strategically um, with the decisions that they make. So despite the fact that um, devolution was um, in, you know, as we say, about 10 years ago, it remains a live issue for business in how we make that relationship work and also is a consistently researched theme in terms of specific areas of HR practice in general and also um, in different geograph ge geographical settings. So we know that it's being researched, we know for business it is where we feel there may well be the weakest link. So let's look now at the role of the line manager as described by the CIPD. Um, these are the areas that the CIPD um, describes and as line managers making a significant difference. So we know that line managers are involved in the performance appraisal and recognition of staff. Um, they are involved in training, coaching and guiding their team. They're involved in engagement, so that's more than just motivation, it's actually getting employees um, enthused about their role um, and involved in, in what they are doing. So they come with um, both a, um, a cognitive but also an emotional and behavioural um, support of their, their role, so really wanting to get involved. Um, and within that, the line manager's role in communicating um, from the senior management and the organisation down to their, their own team. It, it, communication is two-way and um, the line manager is critical in passing information up um, from their team um, and relating to their employees to be able to discuss matters with their line manager. It, they are also critical in supporting the work-life balance of their team and the well-being of those people within it. So if this has been devolved, um, it is not always clear what aspects of line management has been um, devolved. Um, we've, we, we have given them the tasks and the responsibilities that we say here, but we may not always have given them decision-making power. They may not have budgetary power and they certainly um, at times do not have the expertise power to do the things that we have asked them to do. It could be argued that some of the resistance that has been seen by the research, um, the resistance of line managers to HR um, practices, um, might be that we've given them the responsibility of them without the autonomy, um, without the um, the power to be able to um, to to make those and the expertise to be able to make all those decisions. So we've just intensified their work, um, which may well um, cause line managers to resent HR. So that might be one of the reasons why we have um, problems. So we've looked at the line manager's role, 
and how the line manager works. Let's now look at um, the role of business partner. So HR changed um, and it's, it, it, it continues to evolve and change but we at the moment um, in many organizations have a, a business partner role. Um, you may well, if you are in HR, um, be um, at an administrator um, level or you may be working um, in central services um, but you may be wanting to get a business partner role. So let's have a look at what the CIPD describes as a business partner. Um, the role of business partner is a senior or key HR professional working closely with business leaders or line managers. It's usually embedded in a business unit and it influences and steers strategy and strategy implementation. So it's you can see it's got a um, the role of business partner is can be quite high level and is built and particularly when we're we're working as a business partner with some of the more senior managers. My argument here is that um, by looking at HR as a strategic level, which is great and what we should do, we sometimes um, are not looking at the role of the actual line manager, who is the key to the implementation of HR practices but also key in enhancing the um, capability of their team, um, getting them engaged um, and we know that the HR, sorry, the, um, we know that the organization's um, performance um, is based on how the line managers um, manage their team. So uh, the business partner um, needs to support line managers at the front line. They, the skills they need, um, according to a range of researchers like Ulrich and BT and Pritchard, um, are we need to be coaches. We need to be architects. We need to be able to think about how we can solve problems and build things. Um, build, um, we might be looking at restructuring. Um, we might be looking at um, building systems that enable um, our line managers to, to, to work. Um, we are facilitators, we are, the, we are lead, leaders and we are the conscience of the organization which is quite a, a difficult role to have. Um, we will be a trusted advisor leading change. Um, we need to be able to think um, critically but also understand the business and the costs and form strategy. So those are the competences that we, that's you and me, need to take this role of business partner and that is quite a tall order but, but I would like to concentrate on the role of facilitator, trusted advisor and coach. Um, while we're thinking strategically we need to also think about helping the line managers capability so that they can, um, we can facilitate their role. So, let's look at um, line managers' involvement in HR. What has made them um, do those things? You know, to what has made them implement um, HR and to to do that well? Um, well, they they are enjoying the greater task um, variety and the, the range of responsibility. Um, they have at times felt restricted by HR, and we need to remember that. Um, they have the close relationship with their employees, um, but they can do that with the support, um, the partnership with an HR business partner. So they've always got someone they can call on, and those are all good, strong pressures for line managers to be able to take on that role um, and develop um, their, their res responsibility in, a, in, um, in implementing HR practices. What stops it happening? Um, what stops them being involved in HR and think short term and think of the budgets and think of the roles that they need to, to carry out as, as line manager without people management? They they feel, and I, I feel this quite strongly, that they are left without the skill, the support and the training. We have given them the responsibility but we have not always given them the power to be able to manage. They have an excessive workload, we all do, 
um, but they have to um, they have to succeed. They have to meet their targets. Um, it is critical that they do for the success of the business. And we all move to the things that we feel comfortable with. Um, line managers feel comfortable in their own speciality, um, whatever that might be, um, and they they move. They do not feel comfortable with HR. They have to think short term. Their own career has to think that. Um, they they are looking to develop their career, um, and so short term priorities are important to them. We are responsible as the organisations um, su support with the organisations um, professional, um, and we need to help them look long term. And then political press pressures. Well, I don't think we recognise um, the political world that a line manager works in and um, for their own success and they they need to be able to be um, politically astute and that by those political pressures may mean that they don't carry out um, HR practices in the way that they should. So let's move on then to look at um, one main um, capability that we need to th think about which is leadership. Line managers' behaviour directly affects employee engagement. Um, and this extends beyond their implementation of HR practices. It also relates to, to how they, sorry, it also um, includes how they relate day to day with their team. So if they do well and relate well to their team, they will engage their team and we've seen that as we've gone through. But lack of support by line managers has been shown to be linked to burnout and increased stress. So leadership, particularly transformational leadership, is linked to improve engagement and we, as um, working closely with them as business partners, help to, have to help them be a transformational leader. We know that it is the positive experiences of HR practices and the line manager's behaviour that will result in improved engagement of the team. We need to help our line managers move towards engaging their team and support their team um, and support them also with the resources that we're able to give them. If HR is only interested in line managers um, implementing policy, then we miss out on the influence that HR has in building line management capability, in particular their leadership. If we get them as good leaders in that line manager role, then we have good leaders um, as they progress throughout the organisation. We have a collab collaborative um, relationship um, with line managers and it is that collaborative relationship that enables us to support line managers with their leadership. We also are able to help them um, as in their role as gatekeeper and protector of their team, which again, this, this kind of welfare aspect of their role, being able to protect them um, so that they have the resources to do the job um, and that they're able to do the things that they're meant to do. Um, and leading them on to um, achieve much more than they ever felt that they could, we can help the line managers be able to do that. So let's look then at some of the competences that we need to develop in the line manager in, in a line manager um, to support employee engagement. We need them to be open, fair, and consistent. Um, and we, we're saying all of that in the, and if you remember, we said that they live, they, they work in a political environment, um, and yet they need to be open, fair, and consistent um, with every employee. We need to build um, and help them um, manage with integrity, um, manage different um, situations, and this is the area that HR professionals um, are good at, and line managers find very um, concerning and um, where they feel that they lack the, their um, 
ability to do is managing their team with the, all of those issues, helping them be positive in their interpersonal um, interactions with their team. Another area that they particularly find difficult um, is handling conflict and problems. Now we have um, strategies and policies to be able to help them deal with employee conflicts but we need to, to be there to support them um, to do that um, and we too be, need to be a gatekeeper to lead them to the resources that they have to be able to deal with that conflict. We need to make sure they have the knowledge and guidance um, to know how to um, deal with employees and that we are able to help them make those decisions. We need to help them build and sustain relationships with their team that involve empathy and consideration yet still are able to lead them um, to, as I say, performance that they may employees may feel they never were able to, to achieve. And we need to help them support the development of their team. Um, supporting and arranging them um, employees to be able to progress. If we are able to help them do those things then we are able to help them um, be a leader that um, engages their team. So we need to build that collaborative approach um, and be able to develop their team. Um, however um, we have not always been able to do do these things because we've not been able we've given them the responsibility um, of um, HR but not giving them the the skill the um, expertise power or the the resort the resource power to be able to do that um, some of our role is to be able to give them more they we don't want to make them HR professionals but um, by um, making sure that we don't withhold not, um, our knowledge to build ourselves up, but we pass that on and we support and facilitate um, the line manager, we will be able to help them deal with these, um, build on their skills to, to manage conflict more appropriately. Um, we need to get, be able to give them um, the power to be able to deal with um, HR issues um, and the confidence to be able to do that. We also need to be aware that line managers um, implementation of strategic HR practices are influenced by the culture of the organization so we need to develop a culture of growth for them um, and their team it, and we've also said it's um, also influenced by um, the, the politics within the organization. We also need to make sure that line managers have access to coaching and mentoring schemes so we can build on our collaborative um, relationship with line managers but we can also support them um, by having formal schemes in place. Okay, I hope that that has given you a view of what the business partner can do and how the business partner can um, really support the line manager in their role. I have um, a whole range of um, further reading that if you want to um, get in touch with me, which I'll, I'll be able to show you in a moment how you can do that, um, you I can give you um, more sources if you want, but I've looked at a couple of sources that you might find helpful. Um, the HR businessing partnering um, fact sheet is particularly helpful for those thinking about the HR business um, partner role um, and some of the research that I have used um, in this is also there um, as at the top as, as the link you can see there um, shows. Oh, I've moved a little further than I meant to. Um, let me just um, finally tell you a little bit about myself. I've, I've, as you can see here, I'm a lecturer at BPP on their um, professional HR program. I've also written two books, one on employee relations and one on employment law. Um, I'm very much um, interested in your thoughts and of um, the role of business partner. Um, and um, the development of the HR profession and my email link or email address is there. 
Um, I have now a few questions to start off um, your thoughts um, and I wondered what you had in place in your company to support line manager capability, how you re rate the relationship between line managers and HR if you are in that role and how you feel the role of business partner meets the needs of line managers. So um, I leave you to think about that so um, it's over to you now.